Good day to everybody. Good morning and welcome to the Friday seminar series. Today we're very grateful and fortunate. We have Professor Rajendra Pant from the Department of Mathematics and Applied Math, University of Johannesburg. His expertise in fixed point theory, He's an expert in online analysis. And uh, so something that uh, uh, quite exciting and we look forward to the talk. Uh, his title of the talk is on the screen. So please, uh, uh, Professor Pant, Go, go on ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mohammed. And uh, uh, I would like to thank COE also for giving me a chance to present my work here. Today, I will be talking about fixed point theory for non extensive type mappings in Banach spaces. These are the outlines. Actually, I will be giving you some uh, brief development what has happened in in the theory of uh, fixed point for non-extensive mappings, because this theory is, is quite interesting, especially for non-extensive mappings, and still there are some uh, open problems. So I will be talking about fixed points, some definition notations, then non-extensive mappings, some extensions and generalizations of non-extensive mappings. Then we will talk about uh, convergence of fixed points of, of non-extensive type mappings. I will present a method, theta method and an application to fed all integral equations. And towards the end, we will discuss some open problems. Uh, uh, what do we mean by, and we have a self mapping on X, uh, a point Z in X is said to be a fixed point. If T of, of Z equals Z means uh, the map is invariant on that point. The set of all fixed points will be denoted by f of t. Let's take some examples. We have, if we take the set x equal r and we define t of x equal x square plus 5x plus 4, then the set of fixed points will be minus 2, the single term minus 2. If we take x equal r and we define the identity mapping on r for any other set, then the set of fixed point will be the whole space. If, if we take x equal r and we define the translation mapping uh, t of x equal x plus 2, then the set of fixed point is empty. So we have seen that uh, three examples here when, where fixed point is unique, there are multiple fixed points, and there is no fixed point. So such situations arise. So for for a given operator, one may have unique fixed point, one may have plenty of fixed points, and one may have no fixed points. The study of fixed point theory uh, is concerned about the conditions under which a mapping T admits one or more fixed points. So we are basically trying to study the the sufficient or sometimes necessary conditions or under which under under which conditions a mapping will have one or more fixed points. Uh, let's have a look on uh, classical Banach spaces uh, for especially for the postgraduate students. I have included this. Just we are recalling that uh, LP P or uh, this the sequence space of P summable sequences with it, its uh, P norm defined here. Then we have the sequence space L infinity, uh, the, the space of all bounded sequences. And then we have two subspaces of L infinity C and C0. C is the space of all convergent sequences and C0 is the space of all null sequences. Uh, one can clearly see that C0 is contained in C and C is contained in L infinity. And here we are using the supremum norm on these all these three spaces. Then we have the function space CAB of all uh, functions on the closed interval AB defined real valued uh, continuous functions with the supremum norm. Then we have uh, integrable functions, Lebesgue integrable functions LP spaces with the P norm. And then we have L infinity uh, Lebesgue measurable functions, but here we are using essential supremum norm. Uh, which is defined here below here. So all these spaces we will be using in our presentation. So I just wanted to recall the definitions here. Now, um, 
a non-empty set A of a Banach space is said to be convex if for every pair of points x, y, and a lambda in zero to one, the point one minus lambda x plus lambda y is also in A. And convex hull of is of A is the smallest convex set containing A. And closed convex hull of A is that the uh, smallest closed convex set containing A. Clearly, one can see that the A is containing its convex hull, and then convex hull is containing its closed convex hull. Uh, a Banach space X is said to be uniformly convex in every direction. If for every epsilon in zero, uh, in open zero plus two, and Z in X such that norm of Z is one, there exists a delta, which is depending on epsilon as well as Z, such that norm of X plus Y by two is less than one minus delta for all X, Y, when, whenever norm of X is less than one, less than equal, norm of X and norm of Y are less than equal to one, and X minus Y is equal to TZ, whenever T is in this interval. A Banach, the, the, the Banach space X is said to be uniformly convex if delta is not depending on Z. So uh, one can see that uh, the definitions are same, only thing is that that's in the direction of Z and it is in the direction of all points. So it is obvious that uniform convexity implies UCD, or in other way, we can say UCD is more general than uniform convexity. Uh, this is the more restriction in the uniform convexity. Uh, examples, all Hilbert spaces, LP and capital LP, whenever P is between one and infinity. Uh, uh, then we have another definition. This definition also we are going to use. So let K be a bounded closed and convex subset of a Banach space. For any X in X, we define radius of K uh, with respect to x as a number rxk, and that is defined by the supremum norm of x minus y, y in k. A point x in k is said to be diametral if rxk is equal to the diameter of the set k, and if it is strictly less than diameter k, then we say non diameter. A closed convex set, uh, set D, which is subset of x for the whole space x has normal structure if any bounded subset k of d with diameter with positive diameter contains a non diameter point every uniformly convex banach space has normal structure uh, one of the main tool which we are going to use uh, for our uh, fixed point theory for non expensive mapping is the asymptotic center we have a, a closed and convex subset K of a Banach space and a bounded sequence in X, the asymptotic radius of Xn at a point in A, in X in K is defined by this. So we have Rx Xn, the, uh, the asymptotic radius of the sequence Xn. And for bounded sequence, this exists. So we have limit supremum n tends to infinity norm of Xn minus X. Then we have asymptotic radius with respect to K. So that is going to be RKXN, and it is going to be the infimum distance for all X in K, and then the above formula applies for the asymptotic radius. So we have taken the infimum over the asymptotic radius of XN over all points of K. And then we have asymptotic center. Asymptotic center of XN with respect to K is defined whenever the uh, RKXN and RX Xn us are equal to each other. So that is called the asymptotic center. Now we have some facts about asymptotic center. Uh, if K is a closed and convex subset of a uniformly convex Banach space, then the asymptotic center of every bounded sequence Xn in X related to K is single time. And similarly, if K is weakly compact and convex, then Asymptotic center is again singleton if we have the Banach space as uniformly convex in every direction. So these two things are, are, are important for the existence of fixed points of non-expensive mapping we are going to use. Uh, we know the 
the important theorem in uh, the one can say the most important theorem in metric fixed point theory is the Banach contraction theorem. And we will be using this theorem to uh, show the existence of fixed points for non expensive mapping as well. So, this theorem is says that if X is a complete metric space and T is a contraction mapping, uh, means the distances between the images is not increasing, is less than equal to this uh, distance between the points in the domain, k times in fact. So, and k is a, a constant in zero and one strictly less than one. Then T has a unique fixed point in J. And not only this theorem uh, guarantees the existence of unique fixed point, but also for any arbitrary point in the space, the Picard sequence uh, T and X at any point uh, in the space converges to the fixed point. So this theorem is simple as well as uh, means applicable to it has number of uh, applications in, in fixed point theory, either it is for the existence, for the solution, for the uh, linear uh, set of linear equations, algebraic equations, or integral equations, differential equations. And then people have used it to, uh, to partially order sets uh, for, for, for the uh, different type of linear and nonlinear differential equations to study the existence of solutions. Now, non-expensive mapping. So if in the Banach contraction theorem, K is taken equal to one, then we get the non-expensiveness condition. So we have K, a non-empty subset of a non space here. Yeah, of course, one can take metric space. A mapping T, K to K is said to be non-expensive if for all X, Y, and K, we have norm of T, X minus T, Y less than equal to X minus Y. So in the in the contraction condition, k is taken one. This enlarges the class of contractions, and then uh, one can see that uh, it is a natural generalization of the contraction mapping. But the problem is that a non-expensive mapping need not have a fixed point in a complete metric space or the Banach space. So we have one example here. Uh, we have L1 with its uh, standard norm. And if we define K in this way that we have taken uh, the, uh, the set K equal to the all, all, all sequences here, actually L1 is the sequence space of absolutely summable sequences. And then if we take K in such a way that uh, this happens that all, uh, all XJs are non-negative and then sum is equal to one, then one can see K is closed and bounded. It's easy to see. And then if we define a mapping on K by this uh, mapping T of X equal X1, X0, X1, X2, uh, mapping to zero X1. So we are just shifting it. Then one can check that this mapping is a non-expensive mapping, but it's fixed point three. So we have seen that even though the set is closed and bounded means complete and uh, L1, we know already a Banach space, still T has no fixed point in this set. So uh, then question arises, do we have fixed points, exist, existence of fixed points for non-expensive mapping? The question is yes. However, it is possible to guarantee the existence of fixed points for non-expensive mapping by endowing this space with rich geometric structures. So we have to, to, to have some more properties in the space to ensure the existence of fixed point. What is that? So here uh, we have an important uh, property for the non-expensive mapping, which will advise us that uh, what, what should be in the space to have the existence for the fixed point. We have K, a bounded closed convex subset of a Banach space, and we have a non-expensive mapping, then D of T, this set, uh, when we take infimum of norm of x minus tx is coming equal to zero. And the proof is simple. How? We fix it any z in, in k and we choose lambda in zero to one and define a new mapping with the help of the given mapping t. So we have defined a t lambda mapping in this way. Then we can, we show that t lambda is a contraction. One can check that it is coming 
because lambda is strictly less than one. So one minus lambda is also less than one. And then this satisfies the banal contraction condition and the space is complete because you have taken a closed and bounded, closed bounded and convex set uh, in, a, in a Banach space. So by Banach contraction theorem, this mapping key lambda has a fixed point. So that will be equal to X lambda, let's say. And then if we check, and norm of x lambda minus p x lambda, then you will get that it is going to be less than or equal to lambda in diameter of field. If lambda tends to zero, then we get the required conclusion that the infimum uh, x minus p x is coming equal to zero. And this this gives us an idea that uh, what actually happening. In fact, for non-expensive mapping. Uh, in this case, we get a, a, an approximate fixed point sequence in K, uh, means that uh, we, have an, we have a sequence of that limit n tends to infinity norm of x n minus p x n equals to zero, if we have all this. So if we have a bounded convex, close uh, convex subset of a Banach space and non-expensive mapping, then we have an approximate fixed point sequence. And it is also shown that the approximate fixed points sequence doesn't guarantee uh, that the existence of fixed points. So we need to consider something a little bit more. The question about the existence of fixed points of T is now equivalent to the question about whether the continuous function phi k to r given by phi of x equal norm of x minus tx attains its infimum. So if the infimum is attained means x minus tx equal to zero. And then in that case, uh, means uh, existence of fixed points can be, the, the, the question can be addressed. Obviously, if k is compact, then we know that uh, the, for, the compact, uh, for the compact set, the image is also going to be compact in, in R. And then the infimum can be obtained. So, but in that case, because we are already using the non-expensiveness on the mapping and non-expensiveness condition enforces mapping to be uniformly continuous. So such result is going to be trivial in the view of well-celebrated Schroeder's fixed point theorem, which says that each continuous self-mapping F defined on a compact and convex set K has a fixed point. So it means the compactness assumption is a, is a strong assumption when especially we are considering non-expensive methods, then what to do? This problem, uh, one can see that the Banach contraction came in 1922. Until 1965, the existence of fixed points for non-expensive mapping uh, was not proved. But in 1965, uh, three mathematicians came together with the same conclusion in some different ways. Browder, Godet, and Kirk proved the first existence theorem for non-expensive mapping. In fact, firstly, Browder obtained a, a, an existence theorem for non-expensive mapping in Hilbert spaces, and later the same uh, result he could obtain in, in Banach spaces. And here is the reason. So we have K, a bounded co closed convex subset of uniformly convex Banach space. So uniform convexity is required. And then every non-expensive mapping P K to K has a fixed point. Uh, using the, the property we just had for non-expensive mapping, we will present a, a very simple proof of the theorem. So because mapping is non-expensive, so we have an appropriate fixed point sequence for the mapping. So let's say X n is a sequence, an approximate fixed point sequence for this non-expensive mapping. And then we have let's say r is the r it is the asymptotic um, radius related to k and this is the asymptotic center for the for the sequence related to and we know because it is uh, we have k as a bounded closed and convex set in uniformly convex then asymptotic center is single time. so we have a point in, in, in only one point in the asymptotic center now we apply triangle inequality and non-expensiveness of the mapping. And then uh, after that, we get this apply, taking limits su su uh, superior on both sides. So we will be getting that R T Z X N in the left-hand side is, it, is equal to R Z X N and which is equal to R. So we can see that 
Zn and Tz, Tz is also in the same set. So Tz is in the in the asymptotic center, but asymptotic center is 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 singleton. So T of Z is equal to Z. So this proves the theorem. Another result here: uh, Gode and and Browder obtained the same conclusion. Of course, their proofs were slightly different. Uh, Kirk obtained the same result in, 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 a, in, in, different, in slightly different setting. Let K be a weakly compact and convex subset of a Banach space X with normal structure. We have already defined normal structure. Then every non-expensive mapping T, K to K has a fixed point. Uh, let's have a quick look on the sketch of the proof. Uh, here we are considering a family of weakly closed convex T invariant subset of K and defining a partial ordering on the set by set inclusion. One can define the uh, partial or ordering or reverse partial ordering, or means, uh, sorry, uh, set inclusion or reverse set inclusion, and the conclusion can come in both the ways. Consider a chain in this, and using the Jones lemma, there exists a minimal T invariant uh, set B in, in this uh, family. And then using the normal structure on D, we can show that D is singleton. So T, D is equal to D and T is, uh, D is singleton. So that, the, that singleton point is the fixed point of D. Uh, why Crick's theorem is different than Browder and Godet's theorem? Uh, actually, we can see that Uniform convexity is implying the normal structure. Conversely, uh, it is not true. So means uh, this theorem is more general than Browder's and 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 Godet's theorem in that sense. Now, uh, Bruck observed that uh, from apart from being obvious generalization of the contraction mapping, non-expensive mappings are important due to their connections with monotonicity methods. The class of mapping also appears in application as transition operators for initial value problems, accretive operator, monotone operators, variation and inequality, and many other problems uh, in, in nonlinear analysis. Now, um, we, will, we will consider some important generalizations and extensions of, of non-expensive mapping because I'm trying to give you some background that uh, what development have taken place in for the theory of non-expensive mapping. In 1972, uh, Gobel and Kirk introduced the notion of asymptotically non-expensive mapping. So a mapping may not be non-expensive, but it is asymptotically non-expensive. So let K be a non-empty subset of a Banach space and a mapping T K to K is said to be non uh, asymptotically non-expensive if T and X minus T and, S, uh, T and Y norm is less than or equal to K n times norm of X minus Y, where K n is a sequence of real numbers converging to one as n tends to, to infinity. And then they obtained the same conclusion as the Browder and Bode's theorem for this mapping. So let K be a bounded, closed, and convex subset of a uniformly convex Banach space, and T is asymptotically non expensive, then T has a fixed point. So uh, for this mapping, the same conclusion exists as for the Browder's and Godet's theorem. Then in 1983, uh, Jaggi introduced a, a generalization of non-expensive mapping. This class of mapping, first of referred it as Jaggi non-expensive non mappings. So in this case, the non-expensiveness condition may not hold for all x, y, but the suprema, if we take the superior in the left-hand side and right-hand side, then the non-expensiveness condition is holding. And he obtained this result in the, in the reflexive Banach spaces with normal structure. So K be a bounded, closed, and convex subset of a reflexive Banach space with normal structure, and K to K, a Jackie non-expensive mapping, then T has a fixed point. In 2011, Ayuma and Kosaka, two Japanese mathematicians, they introduced a new type of mapping called as alpha non-expensive mapping. Let K be a non-empty subset of a Banach space and alpha is less than, strictly less than one a real number. Then we say a mapping T K to K is said to be alpha non-expensive if this inequality is satisfied. 
uh, he showed that if we take alpha is equal to zero, then this is non-expensive. And for alpha is equal to one, this contains other classes of uh, non-expensive mapping as particular. For alpha equal to one by two, it contains other classes of non-expensive mapping. And he obtained the following theorem. So here, this theorem is slightly different. Uh, we have K as a closed and convex set. So we are not taking K as bounded here like previously we have taken either in Browder's theorem or previously in the Jaggi's theorem. And then we are only taking the, the I traits of the, of the mapping bounded at some point. So we say the set of fixed points is non-empty when if and only if there exists some X at which the, the sequence of I traits of the mapping is bounded. Then in 2016, uh, Lauren Foster introduced a, introduced a new class of mapping, arbitrarily non-expensive mapping. Let K be a non-empty subset of a Banach space. A mapping key K to K is said to be arbitrarily non-expensive if for every closed and closed and convex T invariant subset D of K, there exists some point. So here uh, he's taking the orbit on, on, on some point X not in D. And then if this condition is satisfied, then we say that the mapping is arbitrarily non-expensive. And he obtained the following theorem. Let K be a weakly compact and convex subset of a Banach space. X with normal structure and T K to K be an arbitrarily non-expensive mapping, then T has a fixed point. So here uh, one can see that this is a generalization of its theorem. So in the same, under the same conditions, he obtained the existence of fixed point for arbitrarily non-expensive mapping. And arbitrarily non-expensive mappings are even more general than the quasi-non-expensive mapping. Uh, that, that there is a class of mapping. If we have the exist, uh, fixed point, for a mapping, then the, uh, the class of quasi non expensive mapping is more general than the non expensive mapping. Now, uh, generally, all these theorems which we have just looked at, the non expensive condition or non expensive type conditions are required to hold for all points in the domain of the mapping. Therefore, a natural question arises. Uh, is it possible to weaken this requirement without affecting the outcomes of the theorem? In 2008, a Japanese mathematician Suzuki made a significant beginning in this direction. He introduced a new class of non-expensive mapping uh, called as the mapping satisfying condition C and obtained some fixed point results. So in this case, what is happening? The non-expensiveness condition is not is, 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 is not needed to hold for all points x, y, but only for those, those points where this three condition, one by two, x minus three x is, is, is less than or equal to norm of x, x minus y. And it's still the, the conclusion we will see in, in, the, in the, the next theorem is, is, is true. The existence is, is still guaranteed. Uh, a mapping satisfying condition C is called as Suzuki generalized, Suzuki type generalized non-expensive mapping. And one can see that because uh, the, this condition need not to hold for all X, Y, the mapping need not be continued. Uh, we have a mapping here. Clearly one can see that the mapping is not continuous at X equal three. And then uh, it, it, is, it is satisfying the, the condition for condition C which is introduced by Suzuki, but it is not non-expensive. And here is the Suzuki's main theorem. Uh, let P be a mapping on a convex subset K of a Banach space X. Assume that P satisfies condition C. Assume also that either of the following holds. K is compact or K is weakly compact and X has OPL property. OPL property for the weekly convergence sequence is, is defined here. Uh, the first thing is that he's taking any general Banach space. Of course, he's taking K as compact, but since the mapping is not continuous, so it, uh, the Schroeder's theorem cannot be applied here. So one can see that um, 
this theorem is in, in not the uniform convexity in the space is not required. Uh, it, it, it holds on any, any general Banach space. Only thing is that the K either should be compact or weakly compact additionally to those uh, requirements which we have seen in other theorems. Uh, it is interesting to note that the Suzuki type non-expensive and alpha type non-expensive mapping are independent. And we show this in a couple of examples below. So uh, we have here uh, a mapping considered, and we have shown that for this mapping, this mapping is uh, satisfying condition C, but it is not an alpha non-expensive map for any alpha. Uh, similarly, we have another example. We show that T is an alpha non-expensive mapping, but T is not satisfying condition C for any point in, in, in this interval zero to four. So now uh, a natural question arises because these two classes of mappings are different. They are certain, they are more general than non-expensive mapping. So do we have any other class which is more general than which, which may contain both of the, the, the classes and then we still uh, have fixed points for, for the, the, the new class of mapping. So in, in, in 23, we answered this, part, this question partially. We introduce a new class of mapping motivated by this uh, Suzuki type and the alpha non-expensive type mappings. And then we, uh, we studied the existence of fixed points for this class of mapping. Uh, in fact, we have shown that this new class of mapping is, is more general than Suzuki and the alpha non-expensive mapping. Uh, this is one of the example where we have shown that T is generalized alpha non-expensive, but T is not satisfying condition C. And here we have shown that T is a generalized alpha non-expensive mapping, but it is neither alpha non-expensive nor Suzuki type generalized. So this, this shows that the class of mapping considered by us is more general than, than, uh, than the these two classes. And then we have two results for these classes. So if we take K, a convex and compact subset of a Banach space, and we take K to K, a generalized alpha non-expensive mapping, if T admits an AFPS in K, then T has a fixed point in K. And this requirement of admitting uh, approximate fixed point sequence uh, is additional requirement for the existence of fixed points for this class of mapping. Uh, different than Ioma's class of alpha non-expensive mapping as well as uh, Suzuki's class of generalized uh, non-expensive type mapping. Uh, we have the same conclusion if we take weakly compact convex subset of a uniformly convex in every direction Banach space and then T is a mapping. So the same conclusion holds. Uh, we further investigated this class and then introduced a new class. So here we have uh, uh, PUB is as, as we had, in fact, QAB as we had already for the generalized alpha non-expensive mapping. And if we de define PUB this way, then max of these two is a larger class of mapping. And it contains alpha non-expensive mapping, uh, generalized alpha non-expensive mapping and Suzuki type as, as particular cases. And then we had this lemma, uh, which guided us that this class of mapping, in fact, is, is also uh, a particular class of a mapping in, introduced by some other authors. So if we have a, a alpha re-Suzuki type mapping, then we get this conclusion. Now, uh, on the other hand, that Palset and other people introduced this class of mapping called as E mu, uh, e, uh, a mapping satisfying condition E means we have some uh, mu greater than or equal to one such that this inequality holds. So this class of mapping, if we look at then, actually this is a very large, very big class of mapping means it contains several classes of non-expensive mapping as, 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 as a particular cases one can see, but the problem is that um, the requirement of AFPS is, 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 is to ensure the existence of fixed point, we need to have an extra assumption of 
a, a approximate fixed point sequence. Then uh, let's go quickly to the convergence of fixed points. Actually, even though we have T, we have ensured the existence of fixed points of a non-expensive mapping. It's not easy to like the, the contraction mapping that we can get the convergence of fixed point easily it means we can locate the solution. If we know the existence of the solution, it is very difficult to locate what is the solution because the Picard iteration for non-expensive mapping need not converge to the fixed point. To overcome from such problems and get the better rate of convergence for the iterations for the non-expensive mapping, a number of iteration processes have been introduced by many authors. Uh, we can quickly look at an example here. So we have a, from close interval 0, 1 to 0, 1, we have a mapping, 1 minus u. One can easily check that this is a non-expensive mapping. But if you don't take u not equal 1 by 2, then the iterates, the Picard iterates of this uh, mapping are not going to converge. They are going to give you, if you choose u1 not equal to 1 by 2, any other point in the domain, then it's going to, it, it's going to give you u1, 1 minus u1, and that way it is not going to converge. So uh, to, to overcome from this problem in number of iterations, Man, Ishikawa, Nu, and so many other iteration processes have, have come. Here we are considering one method for, uh, for studying the convergence of fixed points. And this method is motivated by, uh, by, 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 by some known uh, methods introduced by other authors. In 2001, Combat studied the robustness of parallel proje projection method for synthesis, signal synthesis problem. He introduced this uh, iteration here. So un plus one equal to un plus lambda and this in the right hand side, this type of uh, iteration process. Here, PIU are denoting the nearest point projection. So we will, we will discuss that what is it and why it is needed. Here, H is a Hilbert space. And then we have lambda in, 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 in between epsilon two minus epsilon, where epsilon is between zero to one. And these are the strictly positive weights. And here, this is the error term. So let's say this is the error being generated in, the, in computing the project. Uh, then Su, Kim and Su found that the same iteration can be simply written as the operator equation here. So we can define an operator on a Hilbert space by this way, and then E and define in the previous iteration by this way, and alpha and if you choose uh, lambda and by two, then the, the iteration defined in 6.1 will simply reduce to this one. And then we can talk about the convergence of six point. They also, uh, Sue and his co-authors also introduce another method that is called as the theta method. And they study the convergence for this method also. They also shown that many well-known method to solve differential equations are particular cases of theta method. Uh, for instance, backward Euler's method, trapezoidal method, Euler's method, and theta um, are particular cases when theta is equal to zero, one by two and one respectively, and many more. So we combine these two methods to study uh, a new iteration uh, method. Uh, first, let us recall the definition of uh, uh, metric projection. Let K be a closed convex subset of a Hilbert space. Then the nearest point projection or metric projection on H onto K denoted by PK, which assigns uh, each point U in, with its nearest point in K. Uh, in, in, in other words, PK is a unique point such so that this, this, this equality is, is holding. One can check that if we are in Hilbert space, then PK is a non-expensive method. Uh, actually, uh, when we uh, work in a, uh, in, a, in a proper domain, uh, proper subset of a Hilbert space, then what may happen that if it is a proper subset, then this error term may not go back to the set. So, there should be a technique to bringing the next iteration to this set. And this is what this, uh, uh, this metric projection will do. So it will assign to the nearest point in the set. 
by by so the iteration we are considering here the theta iteration so it will bring back to the same and then we are considering these three conditions on the theorem under which we will be getting the uh, getting the uh, the conclusion uh, uh, means if we have a k k as a closed and convex subset of hilbert space and p k to k non extensive mapping with a uh, fixed point set non empty then the iteration defined here will converge to the fixed point of of weakly converge to the fixed point of the of the mapping uh and then using the same uh, here in this case if we replace the closeness by compactness of the set then we will get that the sequence is converging is strong uh because of the lack of timing i am skipping this and going towards the end of my uh talk here we will be talking about yes uh some open problems so in non linear space x e is said to have the fixed point property for non extensive mapping if every bounded closed and convex subset k of e and any non extensive mapping p k to k has a fixed point in k so uh, this is called as the fixed point property for the space we know that the uniformly convex uniformly smooth and reflexive banach spaces with normal structure have ftp we have already seen bowder and godes theorem and then kicks theorem in the case of reflexive banach space because in the reflexive case we have weakly a uh, weak compactness so that implies the 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 kicks theorem however uniformly convex and uniformly smooth banach spaces are reflexive the classical non reflexive spaces c0 l1 and all these fail to have a ftp each of these spaces contain an isometric copy of l1 or c0 and we have already seen that in l1 the ftp doesn't exist for any closed bounded convex subset in, in the beginning now uh, this gives us two open problems if a banach space e has ftp is e reflexive or if the question the same question can be asked the sim, uh, similarly we can have another question if a banach space e is reflexive does e have the ftp it is it is it is difficult to construct new non reflexive spaces but one can go and renorm c0 and l1 because they in some sense they are the simplest uh, banach spaces and check what happens regarding the existence of fixed point for a long time it was conjectured that all banach spaces with the ftp had to be reflexive but in 2008 len solved this problem in unexpected way so he renormed l1 with a new norm and showed that still it is because this this is the equivalent norm so it is non reflexive but it has ftp and then people started thinking in the direction that if we renorm the spaces then probably we can have a, a fixed point property for this spaces but then uh, there are still some banach spaces that cannot be renormed to have ftp especially if we take gamma as an uncountable set and we take l1 gamma or c0 gamma then these are again going to be asymptotically isometric to l1 and c0 and then we cannot renorm them to have a ftp every renorming of l infinity again it contains l1 gamma uh, for some uncountable gamma and therefore it doesn't have in in uh, benavits prove that every uh, reflexive banach space can be renormed to have a ftp but whether every reflexive banach space verifies a ftp is still open and this leads to the following question which type of non reflexive banach spaces can be renormed to have a ftp is there any renorming of c0 in joining a ftp because for l1 lin has already open but for c0 is still to be found and then all these problems Uh, are also uh, open for the mappings we discuss uh, the extension and generalizations of of non extensive mapping either it is asymptotically non extensive or or alpha non extensive or 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 other type of non extensive mappings and then we have these our references the work i presented here is from these three papers we published 22 number 23 and then 
and thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your research and this important area with all of us. Uh, before I raise the uh, people for any questions, there was initially, uh, Jeff mentioned there's a superscript P missing exponent and in, in, right at the beginning of the slide. So I don't know if you want to comment on that or Jeff wants to unmute and ask the question again. Yeah, please, please, please. Uh, let me uh, go back to the slides. Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, maybe on the P norm, if, if I. Yes, yes, he, he's right that he, uh, I got the point now. Uh, here, X here to the power P is there. So sorry for that. Yeah, it's a, it's a typo. Okay, so uh, further questions, you can raise it. Uh, you can raise questions in the chat or if you want to unmute and ask questions, please do so. Perfect. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to ask about the theta method, you know, the... Yes, the... yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm really sorry for that because of the... I... Yes, let me go to that point here. Yeah, please. Now your question. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this one works for numerical codes, right? Or is it for exact solutions? Can no, one get... Yes, uh, it, it, it works for the approximate solution, you are right. And let me take you there. Actually, yeah. we have considered an integral equation here. Yeah. Existence part is guaranteed by, uh, by non-expensive uh, mapping theorems. And then by theta method, what we can do is that we can approximate the solution. Okay. Right. Yes. Because, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, so there's, yeah. there's and we have, in fact, we have shown that it works well uh, for the non expensive type mappings. Okay. Great. Fantastic. So, there could be lots of collaborative work with people working in areas close to that and even yes. in areas related to that, like the homotopy method and so on. So, yeah. Th th thank you for that. So, are there yeah, any? I think uh, Professor Su was at at UKZN and now I think he's in Hong Kong or China somewhere. Yeah. So he has a lot of work in this in this area. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. Are there any further comments or questions? So uh Rajendra, thank you very much for, for coming on board and uh, I mean fixed point theory is so exciting and it it, it it's it's huge, and, and thank you for sharing your your work, and also giving references, uh, due references, and um, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of collaborative efforts with you in future from many people. I hope people get involved, and I hope we do have some workshops even in this area to get people to get excited about this particular area. So okay. I like to thank all of you for coming on board and listening to the seminar. I'd like to thank Rajendra for presenting the seminar. Thank you all.